Welcome into the CHGO Bears a podcast, a Friday edition of the show. Adam Hogue and Nicholas Moriano with you today. And we're joined by a special guest, Courtney Cronin from ESPN, ESPN 1000. She's everywhere, and now she's with us here on the show today. What's going on, Courtney? Not much. Thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to make my CHGO debut. I think it's been it's been two years since I've been here, so thank you for having me. Yeah, that's on us. We should two years too long. Yeah, two years too long. I, you guys have such cool setups. I got to say that because I I have a bookcase where I do my TV hits from in my living room, which is you know like living room. It's like it's literally over there. It's five feet away. Um. I need to get a cool podcasting setup though, like to where I have like some sort of ledge to put my computer and have the cool like sports junk is what I call yeah. it. I have one at my yep. mom's house when I lived there before I moved into the city where I had this bookcase of just like all the sports memorabilia and you guys are just putting me to shame right now. So I really like it. I got to say, I like your dunks on um, the second shelf, Nick. Those are pretty cool. Yeah, I had to remodel mine because I think one of one of our amazing uh, listeners in here was like, "Are you just ever, are you just like a Nike shop?" I just had a whole bunch of <laughs> shoes, so then I, I limited it down to at least one. So uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of work, but yeah, Courtney, once you get to going, we'll have to bring you on, bring you back on, and then we'll see what it looks like. See, Courtney, I've seen your TV setup; it looks great. Uh, Thank but you. You're, the, the, you're, this fits today because you basically have what we call the Mark Carmen setup behind you, which is basically <laughs> just a wall and a window, and Ye- door. My grill's out there. Can you see it? There, it's right there. there you I, go. I yeah. throw down on that thing. So if anybody wants to come <laughs> over for some chicken shawarma thighs from uh, Trader Joe's later, Ooh, you're invited. That sounds amazing, and Fire. it's going to be a great weekend for grilling. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on. We're excited. Want to make sure everybody knows though to uh, please hit that like button if you're excited about Corey to be on the show today. Hit that like button. Please subscribe. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to our goal pre-draft with our subscribers. So please help us out there. We greatly appreciate it. And our draft party is now uh, two weeks away. Um, and I could say that technically the draft starts two weeks from yesterday, but we're sold out Thursday night of the draft party. So, uh, we're hoping you show up Friday and, um, we mentioned the other day, we have two Jervon Dexter signed jerseys that will be given away that night. And we also have a couple Miller light prize buckets that are being added as well. Uh, that all in it. There they are right there on your screen. If you're watching on YouTube, all of that stuff will be given away. Friday night of the draft party. And of course we have Gary Fensick joining us that night as well. So you can come by meet Gary Fensick um, in terms of former bears that you want to meet and talk to. He's among the best, absolute one of the nicest guys that's ever played for the bears. And um, he'll definitely loves talking shop and football as well. So come out Friday night, get those tickets, all chgo.com slash events. And uh, now they got the business out of the way. Let's jump into the conversation with Courtney. Courtney, you've been doing such a good job um, just on top of all the bear stuff. In addition to everything else, how do you do everything you do? This, I have to, I, Okay, I have to talk to you about this because it, it always used to amaze me how JD could switch off his bear's brain and all of a sudden we'd be in Bourbon A and he'd be like talking about the Denver Nuggets like third string <laughs> forward on a national radio show and I'm like how the hell do you do that I wouldn't be able to name two players on that team how do you how do you do that it's like I feel like with national radio the way that the show is segmented it's so much different than local where we could go 20 minutes on one topic on 1000 here and it's usually you know I know I'm filling in next week I know it's going to be all draft it's going to be super bears heavy but when it comes to national radio unless the bears are a big story, we don't talk about them on, on ESPN on the network. So I have to make sure that I'm watching, you know, all of the, you know, the final couple games of the NBA regular season, seeing, you know, are the Suns going to get the six seed? Can they stay in that territory? Like, so it does require you to tap into bandwidth. You might not have usually. Um, fortunately, I like the NBA. I used to cover it when I worked out in the Bay area. So it's not like, oh man, this is such a chore. I have to watch, you know, a bunch of Nuggets games or Nuggets Timberwolves to see who's going to get the one seed. I enjoy that part of it. It's just, you do feel spread thin at points. And I, I know JD and I used to do these radio shows together. And I remember asking him, because he's the one who got me into ESPN radio back in 2019. And I was so nervous for our first show. It was Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. We had the Dickerson and Hood spot. I think it was like 4 to 8 p.m. It's like, oh my God, four hours. 
uh, of just of what am I going to, what are we going to talk about? Do I have to know like everything that's going on from NBA to UFC to major league baseball? He's like, read the news stack on ESPN.com familiarize yourself with, I think at that point there, you know, Kawhi Leonard and the Raptors were a big story. And I think it might've been, you know, is leading into like the NBA finals. So it was Memorial day. There's a lot of meat on the bone and it was the quickest four hours of radio I think I've ever done. And he may, and when you have a great co-host, it makes it easy, but we bounce around to like so many different topics where sometimes you can only really get into the surface level of the conversation. So I don't need to know the third string center on the Denver nuggets. I don't even know who that is right now, but I can talk to you about Nikola Jokic if you want to. Um, but it's fun. It, it's neat. I love being able to kind of get to scratch that itch of other sports that I don't get to cover on a daily basis. Well, they love you here already. Isaac Siegel jumping in with a $10 yeah. super chat. Welcome, Courtney. Always great to have reporter royalty with us. One of the elite upper echelon in the business. And I think we have one more too. Trevor, $5. You're one of my all-time favorites, Cronin, one of the best Chicago reporters. You have so, some very no nice followers that. and very nice listeners. Thank you for the uh, it, it's kind a different, comments. It's a different tone when Braggs and Karma aren't here. It, <laughs> yeah. It's just a totally different show, and the soup, the chat is different too. It's great. No, it's great. Um, and this was totally unintentional. I it just didn't pop into my brain until now. The, you're actually the second around the horn uh, panelist. Okay. That's been on the show this week because we had Kevin Clark on earlier this week. I don't we'll have to have yeah. Woody Page on Monday or something. I don't <laughs> we know. Just line it up and get let's hit we can rip through all the Chicago people. We can get Jay Adonde, Emily uh Kaplan, just they can all come mm -hmm. to my house and do it and then have chicken shawarma thighs. So kill like all um, the birds with all the stones. Okay, you said that twice now. What's a chicken shawarma thigh? I don't know what that is. Have you have you been never been to Trader Joe's? I did, I, maybe what? once, and there's one do you, right do, down do the you road. Do grocery shopping in the house, or does Krista do it? I it's 50 50, but okay. I tend to. I, my thing about grocery shopping is I got to go to Mariano's where I know where everything is. Don't yeah, put me friend. in a store where I don't know. I will spend three hours in there and I'll just lose my mind looking for things. I need to know where well, everything is and get out of there in 15 minutes. That's how I am with the Trader Joe's on Clybourne. I know where everything is, and I am in my healthy eating kick right now. Nick knows all about this um, mm -hmm. because the man is the picture of health and puts us all to shame. But <laughs> I am making, I'm so excited that it's warm out now. So I can actually like, I, there's these pre-packaged chicken thighs that are in, I don't know, whatever the sauce that makes chicken shawarma, chicken shawarma. And I'm going to make them tonight. And I'm so excited because I've got the masters on TV all afternoon talking to you guys. The draft is a couple weeks away. Like it's, it's finally all coming together, but they're, I'm going to have to like make these and bring them to Hallis Hall at some point so you can try them. All right. I'm jumping in because if you're talking Trader Joe's, I got to talk about the, uh, I just got these honey pearl grapes. Have you ever had any of those? Ooh, no, Ooh. is that a new, is that a new item? One of the ones they're, that they just debuted they're this amazing. week? I don't, they don't taste like any, they're just like candy. Ooh. So chicken shawarma thighs, <laughs> honey pearl grapes. Is that swim similar to like a cotton candy grape? Cause I've had those and they're the those same way. They're like sweeter. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's like they're like injecting them with honey or something. I don't know. <laughs> I think Fair we have to. I think we needed to take the pot on the road. Yeah. Do 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 a live show from Trader Joe's or from Courtney's like house while she's hot like, luck. Yeah, that's it. House I, Hall. That would be hot luck at House Hall. Let's all bring in stuff. I'm just, all for it. Just make sure I know what day that is, so I'm actually coming <laughs> to house that day and not in the studio. All right, um, Courtney. In the meantime, while you're doing all of that and cooking and hosting national radio shows and around the horn, you also, uh, of course, write some phenomenal stuff uh, on the Bears. This week, you had a story on um, essentially the best or lessons that can be learned from around the league and how to develop quarterbacks. And obviously the bears are going to find themselves in this uh, situation with Caleb Williams in just two weeks. Um, as soon as rookie mini camp starts, he's going to be in the building. They got to make sure they don't screw this up this time. You talk to, what was it? 11 coaches, 11 coaches and two GMs? And two general managers. Yeah. We, it was a long process from the combine to owners meetings to, gathering all of this intel but i wanted to get a wide array of people who have done it at a number of different levels recently a long time ago people who have done it multiple times like andy reed and i felt like the stuff i came away from like i even learned things that were not just like the no-brainer surface level like you know put them in a good situation don't fire as don't fire the entire staff the year after you <laughs> look high like you know the basics of this but it was it was really intriguing to see the recent products 
of good quarterback development, whether it's CJ Stroud, who of course like grabbed all the headlines for having one of the best rookie seasons we've ever seen from a QB last year in, in Houston, but also Jordan Love, who technically falls into that young quarterback territory. He's only played, you know, he only started one season uh, last year and to watch how the Packers did that and the way that they set him up for such success it's not an apples to apples comparison to what the Chicago bears are going to be doing with Caleb Williams. But I do think there's a lot of takeaways that the bears could apply to their own situation to make sure that a rookie quarterback can thrive here in ways that others who they have drafted have not. So for example, I mean the, the one with when, with Brian Gutekunst and how they kind of handled Jordan love, they had, they had veterans in place. That's not exactly the same situation that Caleb Williams would be coming into obviously with Chicago, but outside of, you know, what the Packers shared in developing a quarterback, who else did you find the most insightful that really does apply to what Caleb Williams can be coming to in his situation in Chicago? I would say it's probably Doug Peterson. And let me pull up his quote because I thought he had some really, you know, interesting things that he was able to relay from the Carson Wentz time in Philly to what he's now, you know, working with with Trevor Lawrence. And you know, the run game, the run support, like, mm -hmm. of course, my mind immediately goes to, well, there was a priority place, not just because of the market for running backs and free agency, but knowing what they would want to have surrounding Caleb Williams of why they went after DeAndre Swift. But what he said about, you know, that element creating opportunities off of in the passing game off of the run game. So whether that's play action, uh, like movement, all of those things, that's important for a young QB where it's not all falling on his shoulders. But then the way he talked about what Zach Ertz was for Carson Wentz early on, similar to how he saw Marvin Jones, a talented veteran receiver, a quarterback friendly receiver B for Trevor Lawrence, which then almost in a way helped the confidence, helped the chemistry between Trevor Lawrence and Calvin Ridley, even with, with uh, Evan Ingram last season when they really saw that come on. That's kind of what the Bears are doing, right? Like they went out and they used a fourth round pick on an established wide receiver who's not going to be here forever, but is going to be here at least through this season. I would anticipate at some point there will be a contract extension, but doing that and surrounding your quarterback with people who are going to help elevate him, that seems like a no brainer for a lot of, you know, just for all intents and purposes, like, okay, you're going to put talent around a guy. Of course, the guy's going to be in a good situation to succeed, but how often do we see that with the number one overall pick where a quarterback goes into a team that is depleted of talent? Because usually they're going into a team that was really bad the year before. Thus, why they had the number one pick. And since the Bears weren't in that situation, I feel like they felt with the resources that they had and, you know, the draft capital the last two years, double digit draft, uh, double digit draft classes that have made major contributions right away. They already had some of that infrastructure in place, and then it was about going to get the big fish um, pieces to kind of fill out the rest of this roster for when Caleb Williams does get to Chicago, if the cupboard isn't bare. And, you know, mm -hmm. Peterson talked about that. I think there are a couple other examples, too, that, you know, you can look around the league and see, all right, this quarterback was set up for success where he wasn't having to do it all on his own. And that's not just on the offensive side of the ball. That's having an opportunistic defense where you don't need to score 30 points a game and your defense can take care, create some of those opportunities for you. So it doesn't just fall on Caleb Williams has to throw four touchdowns every game for the bears to win. Yeah. And related to that, I, I, I found Matt LaFleur's comments very interesting too, because you know, it, people just think Matt LaFleur like, Oh, okay. So the Packers just sit these guys. They don't play for three years. Well, that's actually Matt LaFleur was Robert Griffin's mm -hmm. uh, quarterbacks coach when he won rookie of the year. Uh, he was with Matt Ryan, so he got the veteran side of it there. They go to the Super Bowl, uh, Jared Goff when he was young. So he's seen a lot of this different stuff, and I, I liked how he just boiled this down in the quote that you had from Matt LaFleur, which was, if they're thrown in there too early, they get scars, then they start to lose their confidence. And I just think that that's um, – and then he goes on to say, it's hard when a guy loses his confidence to kind of recover from that. But I didn't read that as like – just don't play them. Just create a situation where you can avoid those scars. And I feel like that's really what Ryan Poles, Matty Flus, and the Bears are trying to do right here with this. We we know Caleb's going to play. 
But how do you create this environment where that confidence can, we can tell Caleb's a confident guy. I mean, that, that much is evident. How do they keep that confidence rolling, even though we know the rookie year of any quarterback isn't going to go completely smooth? And that's a lot of people. You're right. will look at the Bears, or excuse me, the Packers situation. And say, well, they had the luxury of sitting that of sitting Jordan Love for three years, more or less, before he was ready to play. And that that naturally, when you learn from a Hall of Famer, will give you the confidence to get ready to step in, to have seen how it's done, see how to be a pro, and and learn, you know, how to play the game at a much faster level. The Bears don't have that same ability because Caleb Williams is starting day one. And that's something I talked to Ryan Poles about at owners meetings, just kind of trying to figure, well, your quarterback room right now, might there be a chance you bring in a veteran quarterback that's not Brett Rippon? Like Brett's played five years, but he's started four or five games over the course of his career. And the way that like this, their workaround for this was the Ryan Griffin hire that they made. He's an assistant on the staff. He played in the league for over a decade. He was the backup really the third string in Tampa with Tom Brady. I think it was Blaine Gabbert was the number two and then Ryan Griffin. That's their workaround for having more experience within that quarterback room without having that you know experienced guy eat up a roster spot. And that's helpful to where a guy who does have to play early won't and doesn't have the infrastructure of having a, I don't know, Joe Flacco in the room for all intents and purposes, the way that Cleveland did last year. And we're able to ride that into the um, into the playoffs. The infrastructure is not prototypical because of how the Bears are doing it, but it's a circ- It's a way to circumvent what they believe. Obviously, it's going to be a very expensive draft class to sign, and they didn't have those same sort of resources that they wanted to allocate financially to go get an expensive veteran who would be the person to bring Caleb along. But they're doing it in a different way, and so it's not like that part is completely ignored. You know what I mean? Because on the surface, it's like, all right, well, the quarterback room projects to be Caleb Williams, Tyson Bajan, and Brett Rippon. It's a lot left to be desired in terms of the depth, but they do like Tyson Bajan for obvious reasons. Um, Rippon knows the offense, uh, even though he's only in Seattle, I think, for like a very short stint within Mm -hmm. uh, the practice squad last year. But they have that institutional knowledge of how to be a quarterback at the NFL level with somebody on the staff that they're going to lean on to make sure that Caleb's up to speed. Yeah, in some ways, hitting on Bajan as a backup almost complicated it more because you yeah. gotta have you gotta have two young quarterbacks at the same time, but they obviously like him enough to keep him in that spot. Courtney, hang tight. Got to pay some bills for a second. Um, I have some more for you here. I'll make sure uh, everyone checking out Prize Picks, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. The easiest, most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick more than or less than on a two to six player stat projection. You watch the winnings roll in. You can get in on the playoff action, win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. Got the playoffs right around the corner here, and you can, again, win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks with prize picks can turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey. Uh, today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Uh, and they also make it easy with quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stat types. That's what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Go to prizepicks.com slash CHGO. Use code CHGO for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash chgo use code chgo pick more pick less it's that easy go check out prize picks and then you gotta check out salernos and it's around lunchtime and a great place to stop by is salernos on tap located at 1201 west grand avenue in chicago's west town and enjoy there's tavern style pizza and ice cold beers whether you're headed to the game want to watch it live on their big screen tvs or just watching from home Salernos has you covered, and you can go to salernospizza.com or call 312-666-3444. Mention CHGO. That's all you got to do, and you get half off your pizza. It's super simple. And look, I was just in Florida the past couple of days, which is great, but you can't beat pizza from Chicago, and specifically at Salerno. So head to salernospizza.com or call 312-666-3444 for more information. And again, mention CHGO and get half off your pizza. 
All right, uh, Courtney, again, if people want to check out that story, they definitely should. ESPN.com. You can find it on Courtney's Twitter feed as well, at Courtney R. Cronin on Twitter. Um, I want to ask you about, so we were just talking about how they've sort of insulated, created this situation for Caleb Williams to walk into. What do you feel like they still need to improve? Like, what are the areas that you're looking at this roster, this depth chart, and you're like, uh, I don't, I don't know if that's quite enough at this point. I think the most obvious and most pressing need that they have right now is a pass rusher. So who's playing opposite Montez Sweat? Are you planning to go in with some combination of Demarcus Walker and a rookie uh, that might not be your number nine overall pick? Or are you planning to use that number nine overall pick on a Jared Burse or a Dallas Turner? Um, Latu Latu at some point, if you decide to move back, like whatever it is, I think that that is still the most glaring need on a roster that has had a lot of holes solved or filled this off season, but also made some, some upgrades at some pretty significant positions, which of course, when we talk about the least talked about number, uh, you know, top 10 pick in the NFL draft this year, which is the bears at number nine, because we are so focused in on Caleb Williams and the number one overall pick the path that they could take at a number of different positions there at nine really leaves it open-ended to how they address either for need or best player available, somebody that can help in the short and the long term. Whereas, you know, an end rusher could certainly help in the short and long term too, but that's just like their biggest like flashing need when you're taking a look at the roster. That would be the spot that ha- the spot on a depth chart that you're kind of like, okay, this has to get filled at some point. You probably don't feel confident going into the season with this group as is. And you saw the improvement that they made last year when Montez Sweat got here week nine and the uptick in interceptions because of what the pass rush was doing to opposing quarterbacks, but still knowing, you know, 31st and 32nd in sack, uh, sack percentage and sack, uh, in total sacks, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. If you want to rush with four, which is what they want to do with Matt Eberflus' scheme, you've got to make sure that that's, that's addressed at some point. And I know when we were talking with Flus at, at owners meetings at the breakfast that, He felt confident they could sign a veteran now. They could wait till after the draft. Okay, but I still think that that's something that you want to use one of your draft picks on to get somebody in here who could be a long-term piece for you opposite sweat. So, Courtney, we're talking about the the number nine overall pick. Is there one scenario above the rest that would be the biggest surprise for you that the Bears could possibly go with, whether it's maybe training back, whatever it may be? Is there one that supersedes the other in terms of being the biggest surprise i mean it all depends how this board falls it's the obvious answer i'm not trying to give you a cliche but it's like all right so if it goes for there's four quarterbacks that go one two three four then the receiver order gets pushed like what does that mean for the bears what if joe alt is sitting there at nine can you pass him up are you in love with him are you you know in the sense where it's like oh god we have to have this guy or do you feel that the offensive line, as is, where they did make an upgrade in their eyes w- with the new center coming in with Ryan Bates projected to, to earn that position to start. And then you've got Darnell Wright in his second year. You have Nate Davis in his second year with the Bears. Tevin Jenkins, as long as he can stay healthy, solid option for you at left guard. And then can you get by for one more year with Braxton Jones at left tackle? I feel like that's kind of, to me, that's the third option. When they broke off into pods or whatever they were telling us about how like they would go, all right, you guys look at the offensive tackles. You look at the defensive ends. You look at the receivers. We'll come together and we'll figure it out. Like, there's a reason that they listed those three positions because those are the three positions most likely to give them the best pick at number nine. I still think it would be if they go offensive line there, just based on the way that we've seen a lot of these mocks in recent weeks pan out and knowing that Defense is the pro- is is the biggest need there, but you might also get a high end top tier receiver to you at nine, which could answer the short and long term qu- equation at that position. By just because you know Keenan Allen isn't going to be there forever, so maybe it is somebody that you get at number nine. If if you know, best case scenario would be a Malik Neighbors falls to them there, or. I don't even want to use the word worst case, like realistic scenario, Roma Dunze, who's an awesome mm-hmm. receiver is sitting there at nine and you're able to draft him. But the trade back scenario makes sense. I'm just wondering if four quarterbacks are gone there, 
who's moving up to number nine and for whom, mm-hmm. knowing that the receiver classes is, is, is as deep as it is. I think in Field Yates' mock draft, he had 14 receivers gone in the first two rounds, which is crazy. Yeah. Great year to be a receiver, great year to be a team that needs a receiver, unlike the last two years. So for Bears fans out there who are hoping that this can, you know, third time's a charm, hitting on a receiver should be this year given the talent of that class. But if they can't trade back, if they're not really, if the appetite isn't there for a team that's either trying to move up to get a quarterback, because if you think about the Raiders, the Broncos, teams that probably are in the Bo Nix, Michael Penix territory, they might be able to stand pat and not have to give up a first round pick to go move up a couple spots. So I get, I know it's a kind of a roundabout way of answering the question, but I would say probably the offensive line to me would be of anything that would be quote unquote surprise. That's probably where I'd land on that. We've all been trying to kind of get you to see Ryan Poles' general managing style, what Matt Eberflus values with what you've witnessed, gotten to learn the last two years. Would it surprise you if he traded up for number nine? It would. And for a number of different reasons, because you're tapping into next year's draft capital likely to make that happen. Um, And what are you trading up for? We've talked about how deep this receiver class is. Do you really feel that they need to trade up to go get Marvin Harrison Jr.? Because who else would it be? To me, to me, the situation, Courtney, would be if they just view Joe Alt as like this stud 10-year left tackle. Mm-hmm. And as much as they like Braxton Jones, sure. it just helps your depth. And they're just like, that's the dude where now we have our two tackles for, you know, the entire time Caleb Williams is here. And I get that. I do. And if you you think, okay, going from nine to seven, let's say it's seven because I mean, unless they want to get in front of Tennessee and going to six to the giants. Uh, Cause I, I don't feel like alt is there past seven because Tennessee has a pretty glaring need there. Mm-hmm. How would they go about doing that? Like that's a, that's this year's first round pick. That's you know for a team that doesn't, that's a, creates an even bigger gap between where you'd be drafting and then 75 on day two which is something that you know they'd have to stomach I just I don't know if I feel like the offensive line is the biggest out like outstanding need that they have now if they truly are head over heels for Joe I believe that he is somebody like you said who can be a pro bowl left tackle you can put him there for 10 years and leave him there then Braxton Jones becomes your swing tackle And that's going to take an appetite for a team that does have additional second round picks next year because of the GMing of Ryan Poles, that they have the second round pick from Carolina, which is going to be a top 30 pick, we assume, Um, you know, top 32 or 33 through like, I don't know, say like 38. They're not going to be a very good team again this year. So it's another really good draft pick that they could end up giving up or maybe they end up giving up their own. Who knows? But I, I feel like this is a situation where trading back feels more likely than trading up just given how few draft picks, how many bites of the apple they have at it this year and not necessarily wanting to tap into resources for next year, unless it's a player that they just cannot say no to. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what, what ends up happening there. Courtney, I asked Mark Potash last week who we started with these bears beat writer Fridays um, just about this version of the bears right now. And he's seen a lot of bears teams. But so of us, so is everybody here. Does this version of this Bears feel different? Like it can actually end in some kind of positivity. Does it mm-hmm. feel different? It does. And granted, like I didn't cover the team prior to 2022, but I was in the division since 17 when I covered the Vikings. And, you know, I remember the optimism around that 2018 group with how aggressive they were in the off season. And the day before cut down day, they go trade for Khalil Mack and to build this world beater defense, but they still didn't have the quarterback position, right? They go in the year two of Trubisky and there was a lot of hoping and wishing, okay, maybe this defense will be elite enough to get, to let the offense just get by. Certainly we know like how that whole thing played out. And I think it's different this time around where, It feels like an organization that has a well thought out plan that's going to last beyond the 2024 season, which is why, you know, we kind of coming back to the draft capital that they have for 2025 and how they've got all their own picks right now. In addition to a couple of picks, especially that second rounder from Carolina, that's going to be at their disposal. 
it's it's planning for more than one year and not just trying to go all in and make these sorts of moves that might pan out right now. But then like you look at 2025 and if you made a move that didn't make sense for the future, like, damn, like, how do we rectify this? Do we have to circumvent a few things on the roster to make sure that we can still be a competitive team? Um, I, I know a lot of people looked at the coaching staff at the end of the year, looked at where the team was after two seasons of a rebuild and thought, well, if there was any time to make a change, it would have been right now, which is why I truly feel the stability element and why this is different than years past. I have a hard time believing unless they go four and 13 this year that they're going to part ways with Matt Eberflus. If I don't know, whatever the, whatever the threshold some people think is, if it's got to be nine wins, if it's got to be 10 wins, they've got to build on what they did last year, but the way that they have all positioned themselves and talked about everybody from George McCaskey to Kevin Warren, to Ryan Poles, to Matt Eberflus, this doesn't feel like business as normal because they've gone through cycles where it's lame duck head coach gets a rookie quarterback. That coach gets fired. Rookie quarterback gets passed off to the next staff, so on and so forth. We've seen that repeat itself too often to where basic logic shows you that's not the way to create a successful organization. And for what are, what I think is arguably the most important off season in franchise history with everything that's at stake here, number one, overall pick a new stadium that they're hoping to break ground on, or at least like with the plans and with the renderings and then put a, what did Kevin Warren say? Shovel in the ground on the lakefront by the end of the year, if it all goes according to plan, like they can't afford to be the quote unquote, same old bears. If they want to achieve those things that they haven't been able to because of their own self-inflicted mistakes over the years past. So for someone now covering this team coming out of two years of a rebuild where there weren't a lot of wins and there, there wasn't a lot for this team to hang its hat on. Now they're finally like they made it through like a big part of the storm to where now in a way kind of feels like, all right, this is the true year they can start to climb. So I'm sure there have been moments like that for this team in the past, but this team does like this iteration of the Chicago bears feels different to me than teams that I grew up around when I lived in Glenview growing up. Um, and just like being around the division for as long as I have covering the bears, knowing that it never felt like the plan was as concrete and lined up as perfectly as this one has the potential to. Plus you can't fire next gen flus. I mean, look at this guy now. He's got the, he's got the new hair. He's giving Nick a run for his money with his yep. haircut. Yep. He's got a Gucci bag. He's rocking. Um, was that a Gucci bag at the owner's meetings? Am I he, he looks so comfortable in his own skin. And I know like, we were talking about this in the Chicago Bears pod, myself and Pat, the designer, that, you know, when you guys go to a barbershop, I assume you go to the barbershop, you don't cut your own hair. Yes, I correct. would never be talented enough to cut my own hair. But you feel like a million bucks when you leave there. Like, mm -hmm. not, like when I get my nails done, which like, that's my thing. Like, I get, you can't tell me anything after that. Like, I feel like I could just rule the world. And there's <laughs> something to be said about Matt Eberflus in the way that he's exuding confidence when he talks publicly now that we didn't see throughout the last two years and particularly in press conferences this year where he's either talking himself into a corner or he doesn't have an answer for something. The way that his new look and refreshed energy that he's exerting, like when he talks publicly, it feels like that might be reflective of how he feels things are going in the direction the team's going, which, you know, what, it, what, what was Dion's thing? You know, look good, play good, feel good. They pay good. Like mm -hmm. I just, there's something about new look flus that feels different than someone who weathered the storm of, of a really tough two seasons and is now starting to see that his plan that he put together with, with Brian Poles is starting to come to fruition and actually has some legs to it. All right. One more super chat for you on the way out here um, as we say goodbye. But we got one from our guy, Matt Nuku, 499. Courtney is the goat. Honestly, it's always fun listening to a football mind like hers. Happy Friday, everyone. Bear down. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. That was nice. Yeah, he's the best. You have so some really, really nice followers and really nice listeners. Well, I mean, you invited everybody over for dinner. So I, I think mean, they're just... <laughs> All right. Well, if that's the case, then like, you know, bring an appetizer, bring a bottle of wine. Mm, like I don't, I don't have like that much food here for everybody. I don't really, you didn't even get me a guest list yet. So like 
RSVP is, is due by three o'clock, so I can know what all I need to provide. Fair enough. Bring an app. Bring I got the grapes. Got we'll the stop grapes. at Trader Joe's. Oh, it's got yep. the great. It's got to go to Trader <laughs> Joe's. We're gonna bottle prisoner. Everyone be great. Uh, Courtney, thanks so much for jumping on. Of course, Appreciate thank you guys it. for having me. All right, check out all of Courtney's work, ESPN.com and on Twitter at Courtney R. Cronin. She is the best. She's been a great addition to the Bears beat uh, the last couple of years, and I uh, appreciate our time on this Friday. Um, in addition to why, I might bring some Miller Lite over there. Got to bring the Miller Lite. Got to be ready to go with the Miller Lite because especially with the draft, Miller Lite's going to be all over our draft party, what the Bears are going to do with their picks. There's been some wild things that have happened over the years, Nick, but there's one selection that every football fan can share together, and that is an ice-cold Miller Lite. That sound makes me want to grab one right now. The draft has definitely changed over the years, but Miller Lite is still the perfect beer for the draft, and don't forget, Miller Lite is a proud sponsor of the Bears as well. Bear down. Miller Lite uh, knows that beer lovers want their light beer to taste like beer. That's why they brew a light beer that's light on calories, not taste. What's the point of having a beer if you can't taste it? Till, tick, till kickoff comes again, enjoy the beer that tastes like the season. Miller Lite, great taste, 96 calories. Get Miller Lite delivered right to your door. That's right. You can do that. You got a Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com slash CHGO football. MillerLite.com slash CHGO football. Or you can pick up Miller Lite where? Well, pretty much anywhere they sell beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories, 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. It's a weekend. Go get a Miller Lite. And then at some point, you got to check out CD1 Price Cleaners for, well, there's a bunch of reasons. They have low prices. Customers save over 30% on their dry cleaning bill by switching to CD1 Price Cleaners. And look, other cleaners charge a different price for every garment type. That's not CD1. Plus, they have upcharges, these other places, and you may pay a different price each time you visit. At CD1 Price Cleaners, they charge one low price for any garment. Yeah, and that's even including sports jerseys, the same one low price. They have that fast turnaround, too. CD1 Price Cleaners has your order ready the same or next day. Other cleaners take two to four days to have your clean garments ready. Again, not like CD1. They're quick. And they also have the text alert. CD1 Price Cleaner sends you a text when your order is ready for pickup, and they have a wide variety of services they have dry cleaning wash and fold laundry blankets and comforters tailoring and alterations leather cleaning area rug cleaning they got it all but first you got to visit chgo.cd1.com the link is also in the description once there you can pick from an in-store coupon or online pickup and delivery coupon options all right uh thanks again for courtney cronin jumping on the show the rest of the show we are gonna have some fun with something we talk about every year it's a term that um i love to embrace and that is the idea of draft crushes we all have those players we all have those players that you know from the senior bowl maybe even from this college football season on you're just like that guy needs to be a bear that guy mm -hmm. i need that guy to be a bear even if you know, in some cases, not even that realistic. Like, probably my first guy here, unless the Bears move around. Um, for Lawrence, just real quick, what we're going to do is we'll go back and forth. So I'll do I'll do my first one, then Nick will go. We'll do it in the order that's in the rundown there um, because we do have some uh, graphics to throw on the screen for you here as well. So I will start this off. Guy I haven't talked about in a while, but I've certainly talked about him a lot going back to the fall. Um, this is why I keep saying draft to center number one overall. That's right. Pass on Caleb Williams. Go center. Not really, but maybe, maybe grab him at number nine. I w I will certainly not sit there and complain if this if that were to happen. It's probably not going to happen, but I wouldn't complain about it. Jackson Powers Johnson, the center from Oregon, is my number one draft crush. Six three three twenty, winner of the Remington Trophy last year. My favorite stat about him is that he moves to center. He's kind of one year wonder. He just moved there last year. Allowed one hurry all season, not sack, hurry. It's about as perfect of a season as you could possibly have. Uh, never allowed a sack in three years with the Ducks. Of course, it wasn't a full-time starter until last year. But um, in, in terms of plug-and-play centers, he is right at the top of the list. Power, mobility, he fits the Bears' scheme. He's a big. We don't need these tiny centers in there anymore. Just draft a guy, figure out the most problem position on this line for years now has been the center spot. By the way, just in case you're wondering, he can snap the ball too accurately. Yeah. Yep, yep. 
priority number one, uh, which turned into a JV high school problem for the Bears last year. <laughs> um, I just I'm trying to figure out how it happens. I, I'm again I'm in the extreme rarity of saying if you draft him at nine, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Most people are going to say don't draft the center or that's that high. That's fine. I think it would be justified. Um, more likely the Bears would have to trade back. Maybe they end up with them later in the teens or something like that. If it were to happen, it probably won't. They already made, they already used a fifth round pick on a center uh, by, by going and getting Ryan Bates. So I'm not, I'm not holding my breath too far, but he is my number one draft class, uh, draft crush in this class, Nick. Yeah. Adam, once you, we were doing our little meeting before earlier today and you said Jackson power Johnson, I'm like, damn it. I'm like that's, that's, a, that's a guy that's probably a lot I of call dibs. I called yeah, dibs. you call dibs. You got him. You got him. But uh really good player. And if he somehow ends up to the Bears, will not complain. This is a guy that I fell in love with when I was down in Mobile, Alabama, getting a terrible tan. I was at, as I was in the sun, but I'm watching a lot of the wide receivers. I'm watching all these guys and love watching route running. And I love me some lad McConkey out of Georgia, five foot eleven, 186 pounds. Uh, 2023 season is dealing with some injuries, but 30 receptions, 478 yards, two touchdowns. But like I was saying earlier, route running is a big thing for me. Uh, guys that are able to separate, knows how to set up defenders, understands how to gain the right angles on guys and, you know, just turn DBs around and does, uh, he does that really well in those in breaking cuts where you just see that separation become even further as Ladd McConkey sent up the route and, you know, just kind of accelerating from defenders. But it's a guy that I think if you're looking for somebody like a rookie quarterback to come in, who makes their jobs life easier, someone that gets open. And the Bears do have guys like that in, with Keenan Allen and DJ Moore. But why can't you have a, another one? And, and Lad McConkey, who doesn't have to be the number one, but can learn from guys like that. And again, this is a scenario just like Jackson Powers Johnson. I don't know how the Bears could get this guy. Um, maybe if it's a trade back scenario, he's looking, you know, if depending on how you look at it with all these wide receivers, he may, may fit in at the back of day one, but he's probably that day two guy. And obviously the bears don't, don't have that many draft picks this season, but I love me some lad McConkey and just the way he runs routes. It's, uh, wherever he goes, I'm going to be watching to see how he does. Yeah. He's, uh, to me, he's one of the more automatic, uh, picks in the draft that you're not going to regret. You know, is he going to go to the Hall of Fame? I don't know about that, but um, I don't think I think he's one of the safer picks in the entire draft. He's going to be a, a probably a plug and play uh, high upside player right away for you, even as a rookie. Uh, my next guy, we go. We stay with the offensive line. And I got to say, the beast came out a couple days ago and Dane Brugler surprised me with two things here on this player. Um, but this is a guy, the more and more homework I've done on him. I like him a lot. And. Again, someone you're probably not maybe picking a nine, but if the Bears trade back, could be in play, and that's Troy Fatanu, the guy I'm still calling an offensive tackle from Washington. Um, he's six three. He's, probably, he's actually closer to six four. He's about six three and three quarters, uh, three seventeen. That's what he weighed in at the combine, and uh, was the left tackle for Washington last year. Uh, only allowed two career sacks. And what Dane surprised me with, I'll give you the first thing. He has him at number nine overall on his draft board. So I was like, yes, Dane loves him too. However, the catch is he has him as a guard. His yes. number one guard, not a tackle, but still that high. So um, I get it because that size isn't necessarily your ideal tackle. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about Joe Walt being 6'8", right? Um, but that's almost too tall. The thing is, though, his arms are fine. 34 and a half inch mm -hmm. arms. It's not like that's a concern here. Um, yeah, the height is not ideal. Even the weight is not necessarily ideal, too. But if you watch this guy work out at the combine, we don't put all the stock in the world in that, obviously. But it shows up on his film, too. He's running around like a tight end out there. Like I think he could have done the tight end drills and been and, and and fit in. I mean, that's how smooth he was moving around and his speed grade. If you look at his RAS score, his speed grade was elite. His explosion grade was elite. Um, he was he ranked 72 out of nearly 1,300 offensive tackles 
from you know since 1987 in his RAS score. So he moves around just fine. Um, I like when you watch his film the way he picks things up. Like you can see the intelligence. You can see him adjust. You can see him recover. Uh, the instincts are there, and he has a mean streak too in the run game. Uh, there's a there was one clip I spotted early in this draft process doing my homework on him, where uh, and I have it in our write up on our Bears 100. Defensive tackles need to keep their head on a swivel because this is a guy that if, and the same thing could be said about Darnell Wright last year. If he doesn't have work, he will find work mm-hmm. and he will crack you from the inside if you're not paying attention. And that happened to some very uh, poor defensive tackles who were not necessarily paying attention that just got smothered. So yes, I get it with the size. Maybe he moves inside because of it, but man, he checks all the other boxes across the board to stay outside. Um, And worst case scenario, then you just have some versatility to work with. That's not a bad thing to have. And man, I I do love when he, he does fine work. That's like the one quality when I'm watching these offensive linemen, like, okay, you don't have anybody in front of you. Oh, you just you just went and did something yourself. I love that watching uh, offensive line play. I'm going on the other side of the ball here, though, for another draft crush here, Adam. Going to the defensive line and a guy that, you know, is going to be one of the top picks in this upcoming draft, and that's Leatu Latu, the UCLA edge defender, 6'4", 259, 2023 20, stats, 49 tackles, 21 and a half tackles for loss, 13 sacks, two forced fumbles, two interceptions, four passes defense. And if you're looking for the best pass rusher in this draft, that's Leatu Latu. I don't think now, again, it just getting to the quarterback, that's going to be him. He just has so many ways that he can find ways to beat opposing offensive linemen. If you go watch USC versus UCLA, watch what he did to the right guard and right tackle throughout the consistency of that game. It was insane. I felt bad for Caleb Williams as he's trying to run yeah. away, get off his mark, and lay out to Latu just in the backfield. And this right guard, right tackle, are looking at each other sometimes like, what the hell? What are we doing? We can't block this guy. And that's one way to do it, Nick, is go look at any of Caleb Williams' highlights from that game, mm-hmm. and he's running because of Latu. He's on. Yeah. He's running for his life because of lay out to Latu. Now, I guess you could could maybe criticize Latu a little bit for not getting to him, but I mean, we're talking about good on good there. Um, and yeah, it's like, why, why is he scrambling? Why is he going in hero mode? Well, because he has to, because Leatu Latu is in the backfield in half a second. Yeah, number 15 was causing some problems in that game. And obviously the big, big question with him, and it's going to be a big question for every NFL team that's considering him is just the medical history. He had to medically retire in 2021. And you know, I, I think if you're looking at the fit for the Bears, is he the best run defender out of these edge guys? No, he's not. But just the upside as a pass rusher, like if you're looking to put someone opposite of Montez Sweat that you know is just going to have, he's going to have a plan of attack when he goes against some of these offensive linemen. That's Leatu Latu. I just love how he uses his hands. And, you know, they put him inside at, at times too. So it's not like he's just, solely a guy that plays outside on the edge like ucla wasn't uh afraid to put him inside and let him go to work there as well so he's just somebody that he also showed out at the senior bowl and just watching him and how quick his hands were i kind of described him like a ninja and that's kind of what he's always stuck with me like his attributes just with his hands but yeah he would be an interesting player to consider maybe at that nine spire and trade down scenario but again it all starts with the medicals but layout to lot to definitely has a special place in my heart. And uh, and that's the definition of these these uh, draft crushes. My last one that we're going to give, because we're each doing three here, I'm going with Ricky Pearsall, the wide receiver from Florida, 6'1", 191. So uh, adequate size, not the best, but adequate size for sure. Maybe a little bit light on the weight end of things. Um, but if you're watching on YouTube, you can see him making that ridiculous one-handed catch. Um, this dude seriously has super glue on his hands, I think. And he shows it off whether you're watching tape, whether you're watching the senior bowl practices, whatever it is, he just catches everything and he makes hard catches. Like the ball just seriously sticks to his hands. Um, there's really nothing not to like and graded out unbelievably from the athleticism aspect of it. Again, 
Raz score was outstanding. Elite speed grade, elite agility grade, elite explosion grade. He's just okay on the size thing. That's really the only knock on him there. Um, his 40 time was a 4-4. So no checks that box. Um, even if he's not running 4-2 like Xavier Worthy, 4-4 is fine. The vertical stood out to 42-inch vertical uh, on Ricky Pearsell. So not only does he he uh, you know have the ability to just catch everything, but he's getting up there too to make the catches. And I like this tweet. These are some of the things you can find in our Bears 100 database, by the way. Um, all this information, all these prospects, and a lot more, of course, if you're a CSGO diehard. But we also throw some tweets in that pop up from here, here and there uh, throughout the draft process that include some highlights. But Jim Nagy, who, of course, runs the Senior Bowl, uh, had this tweet back on February 18th. He said, wide receivers that translate to the NFL can do these three things. One, win with the release, win at the break point, and then win at the catch point. And he said, Gators wide receiver Ricky Pearsall did all of those things consistently at the Senior Bowl, locking himself into day two. Um, and then he's got highlights showing from practices showing it. And you do see it. He, he's, he wins at the release. He can win at the break point on the route. And then I, everything I just told you about the catching, he'll he'll beat you at the catch point too. So the more and more I watch Ricky Pearsall, I'm like, I just I don't see what's wrong with this guy. And and to me, he has a little bit more upside than Lad McConkey, who I like also. I think these are safe picks, both of these guys that we've talked about here. And I can't wait to see where Ricky Pearsall ends up. But if the Bears are only going to have that third round pick, I don't think he's still going to be there for him. Yeah, no, and, and look, my love for Ricky Pearsall is well documented on this podcast, and I think, too, Flores' offense didn't do him any favors, too, just how they run things, so I think Ricky Pearsall even has more to show than what he's put on tape already at the college are you level. My guy, are, you, are you saying my guy, Graham Mertz, didn't, you know, get it done for him? Uh, it's a very loose use of my guy there. Yeah, very true. And also, uh, Jared Verse had a, you know, when they played that game against Florida State, Fleur, my God, poor, yeah, that Florida <laughs> offense wasn't moving. And Ricky Pierce, all the one catch he had was, um, it was behind him, outstanding. Again, goes back to what you were saying. He catches literally everything. Uh, to round out our draft crushes here, I'm going back to the trenches, but I'm going to the offensive line this time. And we're going to the great state of Kansas. Kansas State's Cooper Beebe, mm. 6'3", 322 pound. Look at that, um, man. Left guard. Look at that. That is just a beautiful specimen right there. Um, didn't miss a game over the last three seasons, 40 starts. And I went and watched the entire Kansas State-Texas game because obviously Texas has a few draft picks in this upcoming draft and Byron Murphy and Tamandre Sweat. Those guys were able to impact the game. But not against Cooper Beebe. He had a pretty he, – he stood his own when facing two very different types of defensive players. And Murphy was quickness. And then Tavondre Sweat was just his overall size. But I really love the physicality that Cooper Beebe plays with. But also, look, he's not the fastest when he's asked to pull and get to the edge to, to block. But he gets the job done. And I do like that about offensive linemen. That, it's not how you do it. It's just can you do it. And – for the most part, like Cooper was do making those blocks and executing them at a, a high rate, but it's the physicality that he plays with the anchor that he shows when he's facing, you know, a guy like Tim Andre sweat, that's going to be bigger than probably most players he's going to face in the NFL, but also the quickness that he would have to be able to adjust with when facing a guy like Byron Murphy. So I think he's a guy that could fit multiple different schemes. Um, so if this wide zone scheme that the bears run, yeah, I think he could fit that. Um, but Cooper, just the his physicality, I think, stands out. And just I like a guy that also is available. And again, he was available for Kansas State offensive line for really the last majority of his career, but specifically the last three seasons. And uh, all these guys available again on the Bears 100 board. Uh, I'll run through where they where where uh, they show up for you. Jackson Powers Johnson, number 11. Right now, Leatu Latu, one of Knicks guys at number 17. Troy Fatanu at number 20. Lad McConkey at 23. Uh, Ricky Pearsall at 32. And then Knicks last guy there, Cooper Beebe at number 45. So all these guys also showing up in our top, well, 45 
not even top 50, top 45, all these guys you can find on our Bears draft board, uh, which we have the top 50 out right now. It was up late last night and earlier this morning, continuing to add guys to this. So we'll probably drop, we'll probably drop our top 75, adding 25 more guys to the board, probably by sometime in mid next week, I hope. Um, and then, of course, by the time we get to our draft, we will have our full Bears 100 ready to go for you. And um, it's all for CHGO diehards. Go to CHGO, all CHGO.com slash diehard to sign up if you are not already. Of course, if you are a diehard, you also get 20% off all merch, 20% off all events, including our draft party coming up. So now is the time to become a diehard if you've been on the fence, getting access to all our draft information and a discount 20% off our draft party as well. Come on out Friday night, 6 to 10 o'clock. We got Dalton and the Sheriffs, an awesome country band playing after our show as well. It's all presented by Circa Sports Illinois and Casa Azul. And um, it, we also mentioned the uh, Javon Dexter jersey giveaways. We got, we got Miller Light Buckets we're giving away, so there's really no reason not to come. Thursday night is completely sold out. We are keeping the party going Friday night. The thing I'm excited about Friday night, too, is just how unpredictable it might end up being. Right now, yeah, only one pick, but are they going to add more picks Thursday night? Are they going to use future draft capital? You never know what can happen in the second and third rounds. Maybe the Bears aren't, don't have a second round pick, and all of a sudden they do because they trade one of next year's picks. Who knows, but we're going to be ready for it. We'll be breaking it all down, and uh, more importantly, we'll just be hanging out with you, having a great time celebrating whatever happens Thursday and Friday night at Joe's on Weed Street. Come on out and go to allchgo.com slash events to get tickets. Um, all right, uh, let's get some supers. We assuming we have a couple more supers. Can't see them right now, but uh, see. yeah, they're loaded yeah. up in here. Here we go. We got sweetness 34 $20 super chat. I'm manifesting a fully healthy season, but which injury would be the worst? Well, that's a that's a random negative question to come up on uh, Friday, <laughs> April 12th. Uh, what would be the worst injury for our Bears as of right now out of these three positions and why? One of our two wide receiver ones, Montez Sweat. Um, and what should we do at number nine? Uh, one of our starting offensive tackles, then Montez Sweat. So I don't Oh, know that's what I got. Okay. Yeah, so one, so one of the wide receiver tackles or Montez Sweat. What would be the worst? <laughs> Uh, I would, well, I'd probably say sweat is way the, the, way yeah. the roster is right now. If you lose Montez sweat, who's rushing anybody? Yeah. Let's, I mean, what, what did the bears do at number nine? If they didn't grab an edge rusher, then you're, mm -hmm. you're really looking for, for help at the, the edge rusher position. So let's hope that none of those happen. And yeah, just be positive. Well, like yeah. the very first sentence of that super chat, I'm manifesting a fully healthy season. Come on, sweetness. We appreciate the $20 super chat. We had so many good positive vibes going here on the show today. Um, let's get to the next one. ACG 499. Take Rome at nine. If he's gone, trade back. Take Jackson Powers Johnson. Take Xavier Leggett in the second round from a trade back. Braggs. Purdue is Dunzo. I L L and Bear Down. Man. Wow. See, Braggs I told you. Yes. Courtney left the show and just mm -hmm. the negativity, just, just everybody, everybody was positive and now it's back to the, to the negative. Uh, but yeah, great point. Purdue is done. So this job. Uh, we, have a, we have a $20 super chat from Craig Leach flashback yesterday. Hogue, Hogue, Hogue. The region doesn't put ketchup on their dogs, dog, unless you're five years old or from Valpo. Okay. <laughs> so 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 even What's the going region, on there so even the region takes shots at valpo i like it um yeah i my advice to anybody from uh what, what they call the region in northwest indiana um well, when i take shots at the region it's really just at rags so i apologize if you're getting you know kind of sideswiped there but it's not it's not meant for you um so i trust you craig that you don't put ketchup on your hot dog you and i are definitely friends uh, also, Craig jumping in here with another twenty dollars. Montez missed on a uh, small call. Okay, we're back to the ketchup thing. Montez missed on a small cultural thing with the ketchup. That's a mulligan. If he's ever seen doing that in real life, I expect Carm to go awkwardly in on him at a presser. <laughs> Love you, CHGO. Let's go, Bears. I can see that happening. <laughs> I can definitely it, see that happening. It is a good point. Like, like I, 
we talked about this on yesterday's show. I don't really give people passes for putting ketchup on hot dogs. Um, but, you know, if you're not from here and you didn't even really know it was a thing, you get one pass. But to Craig's point, you do it again, Mon says, and you're off the team. <laughs> yep, that's that's the bottom line. <laughs> Gone. Uh, Rob S. wrapping things up here. Nick, you want to take it? Yeah, Rob S. with a $10 super chat. Crazy to say, but Joe Alt pick would create a scenario where there's no obvious weak spots on offense. Yeah, if you get Joe Alt, I mean, where? Well, the center is still that spot for me that I would yeah. look at. That's like the that would be the weakest of all those positions. But yeah, then you're you're looking at a really potent and stable offense for the Bears, which is seems really weird to say right now. But still, center would be my question mark. Yeah, uh, I I think we at some point maybe it'll be post draft. I want to see how the dust settles on the interior of the old line, but to me that's still a deeper conversation that needs to be had and kind of questioned um, as we spent so much time talking about the draft, talking about the quarterback situation, rightly so. But um, that'll be a, a conversation for much of the continued off season if uh, they don't draft somebody there. So it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see if they do. All right, um, that's going to wrap things up for us today. On the show and the week, it's been a heck of a week. Uh, I'm trying to even think back. Everybody who was on, uh, we had Kyle Long on earlier in the week. We had Kevin Clark on. We had uh, Baldy on yesterday. Courtney Cronin today. Am I forgetting anybody? It was a great week. Yeah, you guys had a bunch of a bunch of people on this week. Nick so was on. I mean, Nick was in Florida, just drinking Casa Azul, chilling. Those things are good and dangerous. And when you're on a beach, <laughs> you could just you could just have a bunch of Casa Azul. It'd be perfectly fine. So if you're going, uh, you know, to the draft party on Friday, you're gonna have a bunch. Yeah. All there for you. Let's yep, go. Casa Azul, Circa. Thank you, everybody, coming out. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a lot. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, my only shout out going into the weekend is to the weekend. It's gonna be beautiful out. Everybody enjoy their time and um, and watch some golf too along the way. Um, appreciate everybody watching, and listening throughout the week. We're gonna keep it rolling. We already got some uh, excellent guests lined up next week, um, and we are inching closer and closer to the NFL draft. So keep it locked in here at CHGL. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. Thank you for all the support. Send the link off to some Bears fans you know. Come join us at the draft party. We got a lot going on, and uh, it's going to continue throughout this month of April. Enjoy the weekend. We'll be back on Monday at noon. We'll talk to you then. We all silly like the mayor. 